about my, we're going to share IDH video, a presentation by Machias, Protocol of Sustainable Production for Calves, and the relationship of the traceability of leather with sustainability. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I'd like to thank you for the invitation to share this protocol. I'm Machias. I'm the CEO of Nachkap. We're a consulting company that seek to value natural capital and good practices in the field. Connecting this practices in the field and so I have a history in the beef industry. I worked in industry and export and in 2019 I started working in sustainability. That's when we started the demands for traceability. Today I talk in the name of IDH. Is not cap. We are implementers of IDH. IDH is an organization based in Holland or the Netherlands that transforms markets, making markets have a more sustainable commodity production. IDH is basically financed by European governments, basically the Dutch government, the Swiss and Danish government, and the Norwegian government. And IDH works in co-financing. IDH never places money itself into a project. It has the private sector to transform the necessary um, chains. ADH has more than 700 partners in the public portion, more than 70 programs, 12 sectors, and 42 countries. Here we have some of the partners of IDH at a national and international level. I think that some of the impact of IDH has been working in some numbers, over 11 million, over 12 million tons, metric tons of product produced sustainably with several hectares of response, over a million hectares of conservation and uh, several families, families of farmers, they increase their sustainability in their production process. 150,000 workers with better working conditions. And in terms of impact, one of the objectives is to better, generate better jobs and better environment. There's a lot of effort in terms of hygiene. ADH works with governance and how we can organize private and public actors to resolve complex problems for 
leather traceability. This won't just be resolved by the slaughterhouse or the cannery or by civil society or the importer. We need to sit everyone down and find the solutions together. IDH does this work to join together organizations, bringing resources so that these innovative solutions can be placed into practice. We have a photo of the team. Paulo is here, representing IDH. This is the newest in IDH, specialist in protocols. It's a big team. IDH also works with lots of partners. They don't necessarily implement the program, but they have several partners that work with IDH. We're one of them. And we have several here that work with Soy, the Machika Association of Farmers of Mato Grosso, it's a partner of IDH, and the CAF program, Sibrai, and others. Jaconia, which is an organization that works with organic cotton in the Northeast. There's a lot of cooperation with partners that are implementers. An important part of RDH is the effort to change the territory. We don't just work on farm A or B, we look at a city, a region. We have long term objectives where you'll have either a resource or a different contribution, and IDH connects these activities both with buyers and investors. It's one example is support of a strategy in Mato Grosso, a strategy with over 10 years. It's been working with the Mato Grosso territory and the pillars involved. It's a long-term strategy in the state of Mato Grosso to produce more and more sustainably and with a social inclusion. Here we have some examples of regions where IDH works. IDH has what we call a pact. There are PCI packs. We take this strategy and put it into a region. We have various regions in the state of Marion. It's semi-arid and very soon we have a PCN in the state of Pará. Co-financing projects where IDH enters along with a private partner to finance a project. A program of cultivating sustainable life. A program to support um, sustainable soy. And here we have a CAF program. And CAF is interesting because it's a place where IDH goes, the farmer goes and asks questions about environmental issues. Talking a bit about these co-financing programs, we're going to talk about the sustainable production for calves in the protocol. This, pro this program is implemented by us in the Juruana Valley. The same program is implemented in the Araguaia Valley in the Pantanal. In the Sohiza region, there's a co-financing program with Katsun. It's a group of farmers it's certified and approximately 80,000 hectares of certified soy supported by IDH along with the market connection and there's also support for the program Nosu Lechi within the Juruema region of Mato Grosso. Speaking a bit about the program, 
and some of the challenges of traceability, we wanted to say that the program is a pioneer. It's been implemented since 2019 in Mato and wants to support this today. This is part of the traceability process, and there's a bit of the marginalization of the farmer. He's a bit distant from this fatted calf that goes to the slaughterhouse. So we want to address this and support the producer for them to be more sustainable. Within the activities of the program, there's the production, environmental, land use, and traceability aspects. For the sustainable region in the Araguaia Valley and in the Pantanal, is sponsored by the IDH, Icai for Brazil, and the Icai for Foundation. There's also a conversation with other actors that want to uh, provide resources for this program. Here we have some of the numbers. What we have as a result, we have almost 600 properties and almost three biome and three biomes. We have an estimate of almost 580,000 tons of CO2 sequestered by these farmers and a conservation of almost 190,000 hectares of forest within these properties. What do we want to do with this? We want to support this farmer and generate a model to address traceability. The traceability of indirect suppliers is very complicated. We've been talking about this since last year with the leather sector, especially regarding the importer in terms of traceability. Now they don't know about direct, they want to know about indirect. It's very different difficult for us to reach indirect. There's various pathways for this within this. We have been testing models since 2019 and we believe not necessarily the only way of doing it, but we believe interesting content is what has been tested. There's already a concept, a proof of concept which generated the protocol which we'll talk about. What does the farmer need? Uh, handling of the management of animals, genetic management. What are the points of the program? We do a diagnosis of the property. We look at the requirements of the purchasing of cattle. And we support the farmer and in the productive sector we look at then we go to traceability. What do we list as a property in IDH, which is to create new models, and IDH has the resources to test these. And so, what have we been trying to do in the program? Based on what has been implemented in the field, there's a the protocol for sustainable calf breeding, which is already registered and approved. And this protocol was created based off of practical understanding and practical effort within the properties. The program has been serving as a test for us to create a way to look at traceability. When it comes to opportunities, we look at the private sector. Today, we have a traceability system that's very advanced with control levels in the tanneries that are impressive. People say that we've been marking leather with a hammer for 100 years. 
Today, there's a lot more technology, and the level of uh, traceability control is to bring the industry together to give an incentive for this to happen. IDH, through these programs, uh, are trying to test models and bring the private sector with it to develop solutions. When it comes to opportunities for companies, once again, how can we uh, escalate this or scale this traceability? How can we understand the legal requirements applied? And most of all, how can companies participate in this type of solution? IDH, again, as an investment, it puts in the resources. How do companies buy cargo? How do they buy Jello? And all types of products that we have that are derivatives of the cattle and they can participate in solutions. The producer receives all this with no cost. In our part of the project at the Jiruma Valley, we have approximately 172,000 producers without costs, all part of the program. We've had approximately 10,000 animals linked in these animals are not necessarily within a chain that we were able to come in with this product or it's like beef or leather in a final color and the amount that was sold was still small within a proof of concept but here we have a history with this field work which was started in January 2009 and almost at the end of 2019 beginning of 2020 we elaborated the protocol and we put this in the CNA in 2001, we did the first lot of this beef traced since the origin, a small lot, small volume, but a lot in terms of the proof of concept. This was traced into the shelves of Kahi 4 in June of 2021 with an approved protocol. The protocol is the first and only. Approved for indirect suppliers. We're now giving it scale. And in 2022, we announced this traceability system using blockchain technology. What we're doing now is testing. This is scale. We've been working with different industries in different regions and we want to go beyond proof of concept and bring in scale. The, is how to connect this calf to, um, to this because this is something I think over time we'll be able to have this recognized and supported and we want to use this protocol they want to end the traceability of leather. The major challenge we export 80%. Beef, we export 30 The demand on leather is very large. We do a luxury article we see leather as an opportunity where you can tell the story to differentiate the product we have today a lot of demand by the customers well, sometimes we can't establish this communication adequately between the different parts of the supply chain for this information to arrive in an appropriate manner 
I think this is part of the challenge. I think the idea of the motto of the event was good to bring this because we don't necessarily have this. And so we're bringing in a model that we believe is very effective. These are modules that we're working on. I think a main point that we have in the system program is that we're working on our of trace, individual traceability. This is really important. We don't work with the issue of a batch or a lot. So we have this opportunity to work with a batch. But what we want is to develop this so we have individual traceability. Then we have zero deforestation as well. We talked to some about the rules of, and it's very probable that the UK will accept products that's in conformity with the forestry uh, code, not necessarily having to have zero deforestation. We have a, a very well structured forestry code in Brazil. How can we tell the story? Bringing in mechanisms that are approved by third parties, and our protocol is once again registered and approved in the CNA and what approves all these protocols is how can we transform this in an option whether it be for the be for the leather industry how can we use this as a way to guarantee the traceability process making these animals have uh, accompaniment throughout their lifetime I think in this is some of the message. I think it's a huge challenge in terms of traceability. I think that once again, the name of the event is an interesting name. And I think we're available to talk, to discuss. It's important that we have the participation and the input of all the players in the chain so that we can reach solutions that meet the, the this increased dem uh, demand so we can develop income for our country. Thank you.